If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that one of the projects I've been working on for quite some time now are my AI-powered wildlife monitors. They're self-contained devices that use some computer with a camera and an onboard AI accelerator to run a neural network-based object detection model. The goal with these was to detect and identify animal species with a camera in real time in remote locations and then do something with that or send that low bandwidth detection data back over some network so we can monitor wildlife from anywhere in the world. I've gone through quite a few versions of this system now, starting back with the old Nvidia Jetson and then moving on to the Raspberry Pi 5 with the Halo Accelerator and experimenting with different enclosures along the way. But if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that one of the biggest challenges has been power management, specifically how to power this device effectively in a remote location. These systems use on average about five to six watts while running, and the mini version uses about two watts. Now that's not huge, but if you wanna run it 24 seven, or even just 12 hours a day, that can add up quickly. To keep it going constantly, you need a fairly large battery and solar panel, but it's not just about the capacity. You also need to be able to charge the battery fairly quickly when sunlight is available. Through my development and testing, I found that even if you have a large battery and a decent, you know, 30 to 60 watt solar panel, if you can't consistently generate and store a full day's worth of energy, and it doesn't matter how big your battery is, eventually your battery will drain and your Pi will lose power. So having a solar charger that can efficiently recharge your battery quickly when the sun is out is actually really important. There are plenty off the shelf maximum power point tracking solar chargers for large lithium iron phosphate batteries, but most and the output either 12 volts or you need to just directly connect to the battery, meaning you still need to get an extra voltage regulator to step down that voltage to five volts to power the Raspberry Pi. On top of that, there's usually no way to actually interface with the battery to the Raspberry Pi, so you can monitor the battery's voltage or charge current or what the solar input is. For my previous projects, I've hacked together a few different off-the-shelf components to try and get it to work. But for the last six months or so, I've been trying to take this project a bit more seriously with the aim to turn it into a commercial solution. And in some of my previous videos, I've sort of teased the latest versions of my AI wildlife monitors. As it turns out, a lot of people seem to be facing the same exact problem I am in regards to solar charging a battery to provide power and an interface with a Raspberry Pi. So over the last few months, a friend and I decided to design and develop a hat for the Raspberry Pi that solves this exact problem. And we did it with thanks to our PCB sponsor, AllPCB. AllPCB did the PCB manufacturing and PCB assembly. So all we had to focus on was the design and testing. You can click the link in the description to go to all PCB and let them handle your PCB manufacturing and PCB assembly needs. So thank you to all PCB for supporting this project. Introducing the PV Pi, an all-in-one power solution for providing off-grid power for the Raspberry Pi. It provides efficient solar charging with true maximum power point tracking and lets your Pi communicate directly with an onboard microcontroller to manage power intelligently. If we take a closer look, we can see that the PV Pi uses the Texas Instrument BQ25756 battery charge controller that implements true maximum power point tracking when solar charging. We've configured it on the PV Pi to charge a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery pack. We chose these batteries because they are a commonly available high capacity lithium battery pack that has an already built in BMS or battery management system. They're also readily available in a wide range of capacities. I've seen them from five amp hours all the way up to 500 amp hours. And in a lot of cases, they're actually being used as a replacement for the 12 volt lead acid batteries. But the lithium iron phosphate batteries can actually be discharged to a much lower capacity down to like five to 10% of the advertised capacity without any degradation in the actual battery's life. Whereas lead acid batteries, typically you don't wanna discharge them below 50% of the advertised capacity or you will degrade the battery life. So in my opinion, they're perfect for remote computing applications. The PV Pi can charge these batteries up to 10 amps, meaning that with a large enough solar panel, you can actually get over 100 watts of charging power. It supports a wide range of solar input voltages from about eight to 55 volts. And like I said, it uses the true maximum power point tracking to find and track the actual maximum power point dynamically as light conditions change. And that's important because the voltage at which a panel produces its maximum power isn't fixed. It changes with sunlight and temperature. Uh, many cheaper, 
so-called maximum power point tracker chargers actually just use a fixed voltage point, but the charge controller we've used periodically searches for and tracks the real maximum power point. The PV Pi has an onboard STM32 microcontroller that is used to configure the charge controller and handle a bunch of the smart features we've got. In order for the Raspberry Pi to communicate with the microcontroller, we use simple string commands over serial UART. So not only can you monitor the battery voltage and charge current and the solar panel voltage and current outputs, the onboard microcontroller can also do low voltage power off, so it'll automatically cut the power if the battery goes under a certain voltage. You can also configure a voltage threshold for automatic power up, so you can get your Raspberry Pi to monitor the battery voltage and shut down once it gets to a low voltage, and then the onboard microcontroller will automatically power the Raspberry Pi back up once the battery is charged back up to a safe level. It has a power off after delay feature. So the microcontroller has control over the Raspberry Pi's five volt power supply. So you can send a command from the Raspberry Pi to the microcontroller to tell it to turn power off after a set delay, say 10 seconds. So you can shut down your Raspberry Pi safely and then have it turn off power. You can also use the onboard microcontroller's real-time clock for timekeeping. And it also has an alarm that you can set via the Raspberry Pi, power the Raspberry Pi back on at a set time. One of my favorite features that we've got implemented on this is what I'm calling a power watchdog. When you enable that, the microcontroller will monitor communications from the Raspberry Pi. And when it hasn't heard anything from it, not even a heartbeat signal, after a configured amount of time, say five to 10 minutes, then it will automatically power cycle the Raspberry Pi. And this feature is there for situations where you've got your Raspberry Pi set out in a remote location. And for whatever reason, as they do, your Raspberry Pi crashes in some non-recoverable way. So at the moment, we've developed our working prototype that we're testing, and our current plan is to launch this as a Kickstarter very soon in order to get the final version developed. We're doing this so that we can order the boards from the manufacturer in bulk to keep costs down. We're also going to be including a bunch of accessories for mounting the PV Pi onto the Raspberry Pi, and we'll include some XT30 connectors to get you set up and running quickly. We'll also be developing documentation and some code tutorials to show you how you can use the PV Pi and what it can do. We're in the final stages of organizing the Kickstarter and hope to launch any day now. We're super excited to bring you this device and can't wait to see what you do with it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and a special thanks to our channel members for their support. See you in the next one.